Carmodeler fans, welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral, and this week's build here I'm featuring, this is a 69 Baldwin Motion Phase 3 Corvette GT here. And uh, of course it's one of my favorites, as you can tell as I've built a few of them on the channel now. And uh, you know, thanks to the channel, some of the things that came my way here and some of the friends I've made doing this. And this is a result of that, as a matter of fact. But when it comes to the car itself, Joe Rosen and the story of the Baldwin Motion Chevrolets that uh, were built by him in Motion Performance and sold through Baldwin Chevrolet as the partnership between the two, um, quite legendary now, but was really something to behold back then. And the partnership really started in 68, even though Joe Rosen actually raced a 67 uh, L88 Corvette marked co-motion on it and he was racing that and he really was a Corvette fan according to the books I was reading and he really liked uh, America's uh, sports car and he dreamed of, of building them and as a matter of fact it was a wasn't too concerned about budget or or anything like that when it came to them because he wanted to build the ultimate uh, you know sports car and he knew if he got there, built the car, that money would really be no object, that they, they would sell, they would find buyers. Um, so that really wasn't a concern of his, but uh, he got started with the 68s and uh, he called them um, SS427s on those. And he had uh, those and then he quickly stepped up to the phase three uh, 427s. But the top of the line variant here um, was the GT. Those didn't come out until 69. And uh, they could be any way you want. No two were identical. They all had uh, their similarities with their, his 500 horsepower 427 engines he put in them. And you know he could build you uh, a race car, a street strip car, or even a full on touring car. I mean, he, he would build what you wanted. Uh, which was really cool. And then he really wanted to go up to the style department. Matter of fact, when he launched the GT, he was really quiet about it. But he was doing SS427s and Phase 3 SS427s, which, by the way, the original Ravel kit is actually an SS427. That's what uh, it represents. And But very few of those were made. Well, even the GTs, very few of those were made. Uh, 10 to 12 were made. There are uh, a few surviving ones, but uh, one of the first ones was actually an orange one, much like this with the black stripes. Uh, I understand there was two of them, but um, they were they were done in that color combo, which is what I wanted to represent here. Uh, I did want to do an earlier car that still had the pop-up headlights and the stock taillights, but had his signature hood modifications, um, the grills, gills right there, and then the fender flares, and of course, this back window, which was twofold. Believe it or not, it was actually a, an idea that was a functional modification. One, he was doing it for aerodynamics, where you know, it was a nice compromise there. It would help the aerodynamics of the car quite a bit. And there was a second uh, side thing, being a GT car, you needed more room for luggage. Now, this car has no trunk. You know, you think about the luggage capacity in this, but with the stock rear window being down and back, which, you know, is on the original Ravel kit, this one, you know, that really cuts your space there. Now, so there's a little bit of room in there with three compartments you can get in there. But uh, in, in Joel's, in the book on motion performance, Joel, I guess, had a couple of uh, uh, show dogs, uh, pretty good sized dogs. And with this right here, you can definitely get more luggage in there and even room for his dog to, to sit back there, uh, get him in there. So it really increased the luggage space. So it was a, a very functional modification uh, to the car. You know, you know, basically all this wasted space and room for tank. But anyway, um, so that was a very functional mod. But when it came to the GTs, the later ones had the recessed headlights and then the covers, which is what I did on this car. I'm just jumping back and forth between all of them had these modifications and then multiple different taillights and any custom stripes you can think of. He would do it and even there's only one car with these you know, Shelby scoops here and that's kind of reminiscent of the taillights that they did. So it really was, he would do anything and everything, whatever you know the customer wanted or he, he would uh, build it 
and somebody would come along and say, I got to have that car. So uh, while this one is representing an earlier version GT, they have emblems all over them. Some of them say uh, SS427 back and GT. This one I decided to have the motion on the back right there for motion GT and kept the stock taillights and uh, the pop open gas cap. One of them actually had a charger, uh, a 68 to 70 charger uh, pop open gas cap put in it. Um, so I read about that too. But he had uh, uh, some success doing this, but he was at full capacity trying to get everything he can and, and build as many as possible. But really didn't want to sacrifice the quality of them. And he had three different side pipe options. There was the, the non-painted, more of a race style one. There were chrome aftermarket ones. And then even the factory side pipe ones, which this one has on it. So, you know, he did a lot of that. So there was a, a, you know, no two or alike. So multiple um, variants here and different striping configurations as well. But more of this classic uh, stripe set up here which supposedly the thought was and i don't know how true this is but it's been quoted in a couple of magazines that he kind of liked the idea of having the whole back half either black or white because if you're getting away and, and all you see is the back it kind of looks like it's one color when it was a different color car coming at you but um kind of a you know uh, you know whether that's true or not is very interesting to me but let's uh, take this outside and, and a couple of the other ones and see how it looks in the sun. And I'll get more specifically into this build as we continue this video. Well, here we are on the sun with this uh, Ball in Motion Phase 3 GT here. And uh, seeing how it looks in the sun with the sitting on BG's rotisserie that uh, he provided. So, sponsored by BG. And uh, anyway, here's... Uh, the scale finishes Monaco orange paint, which is a base coat and a clear coat that I used uh, Sharon Williams Real Automotive clear coat. That's what I used. I got a bunch of it. Basically, I got almost a gallon of it. So, but that's uh, meant for real cars. But since I have so much of it, uh, I have that on hand. So here she is, looking looking really good. Loving that orange paint job, and those wheels with that stance where I spent some time. Getting the wheels moved out and fitted uh, nicely and the side pipes and everything and especially the photo etch details and those decals from Kenny Terry. Uh, unfortunately he passed away but uh, he made these decals for me uh, months before that. Months or maybe even a year but not really sure on the timeline on that but you know, another untimely uh, passing unfortunately. But she's looking really good especially seeing that uh, air cleaner poking through that hood scoop there, which, you know, these Stinger hoods from Chevrolet, they were not uh, open because uh, they came on the 67 Corvettes, but they were not open. There was a piece of chrome trim there to give you the look, but, um, and even when Yanko and some of the other guys used fiberglass ones, they were molded shut, but on these uh, Baldwin motion cars, they were open. There was no ductwork under them. They just flat out, uh, just scooped some air um, right through, just in and out, no real ductwork to it. But uh, this one's looking really good, and I'm very proud of this one. And this is one that I really wanted to build, this particular combo and everything. But I didn't know this uh, resin body that existed. I was going to build my own, which I mentioned earlier or later, whichever you know section of the video I actually put that in. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll pull up one of the other ones and see how it glistens in the sun. Let's go with my original old build here. This is the first one I built when this kit first came out. And uh, it's stone stock. Like I mentioned, the scoop's molded shut. This thing's just built right out of the box. No mods, use the decals and everything. And uh, I believe this is just um, like a burgundy red metallic from Testers. And it would have to be one of the uh, early ones that I airbrushed as this build is when this kit first came out. Uh, built it in 91 or 92. I was still in high school when I built this. And uh, so this is over 30 years old. and. You know, for as old as it is, it still looks good. And for one of my better ones, which is why it survives today, as some of my not so good ones I tore apart and rebuilt. But very proud of it and really enjoyed building this one. I don't think I featured the details on this one on the channel. It's made some appearances uh, when I went over uh, the kits and uh, when I was building the other ones. But, you know, with all of its, you know, 
crime and gory here. It's a uh, uh, still, you know, reminds me of a fun time and, and a kid I really enjoyed building. Of course, this kid is fun to build. You know, obviously I built so many of them, but uh, you know, this is looking good. But let's move on to the newest one of that. This is the modern build of the exact same car. Uh, pretty much the same thing, built pretty much right out of the box, other than uh, after learning that the decals were not correct, uh, these, you know, th these aren't really decals. I actually painted that white stripe on there and opened up the hood. That's really all I did. I really didn't do anything else to this build when I built it. I just enjoyed building it and building it right out of the box. And, um, you know, then challenged myself to paint the stripes and really like how that came out. Now, the video for painting the stripes is on the channel. I did do that on film. And I believe I used uh, Tamiya's Mica Blue spray paint on this one. And then the same real automotive clear coat uh, on top of it. And then the white is just uh, uh, kind of the, the testers, but it's kind of the flat white that I sprayed and um, came out really good. And you know, then I touched up the paint and uh, painted it with the clear coat. So here, we'll move on to the next one. This is the one I really want to see in the sun right here. This one. This one's another resin body, but this one is uh, Mini Exotics resin body. Hasn't been available in over 20 years. I had learned about it and seen it, but was really, you know, dreaming about, you know, if I could find one someday. And it did come my way. Uh, Jerry um, got to become friends with him. And uh, he had one that was started. This is on the channel where I bought it, stripped it, rebuilt it, painted it. Um, decals redone, all this stuff. This is also the same decals from Kenny Terry as it had both uh, stripe options and everything. But this paint, really love this paint job. This was one of the more difficult paint jobs I've done. It's actually uh, just a gold base coat. Then I used Tamiya's acrylic uh, candy yellow, um, which is a, a transparent paint. I sprayed that over the gold to give it this more Aztec yellow gold look, then put the decals on top of it, uh, custom cut those taillights, custom made those taillights, and you know, you know, clear coat it with the same automotive clear and used all the photo etched uh, emblems and everything. Now this one really shines and it's probably the, the over the top one being the, the car that had the scoops right here, the Shelby scoops, which I think look a little bit awkward but I like my cars, you know, fully loaded and just, uh, you know, the, the most outrageous example of them. So that's one of the things I really love about this one. And then, you know, it was also one of the few that were seriously custom painted as uh, on this particular car, the real one that was painted like this. Uh, Baldwin Motion, Joe Rosen, they charged an extra $500 for the custom paint on it as far as uh, having that, that uh, candy gold paint job that it has. But, you know, this one, probably one of my uh, more challenging paint jobs as far as getting the color to match and not stripe and everything. And um, then I had to repaint that hood because I messed up the hood. So getting the hood to match, um, that was fun. But love the way this one goes, especially in the sun like this. I wasn't doing these videos when I featured this one. This one's on the channel. But looking at that, uh, the candy gold paint. Man, I'm enjoying that. Well, let's uh, head back inside and continue on. All right, so as I stated, this is actually um, Scale Finishes paint and I used uh, Monaco Orange, which is the Corvette color. And uh, Corvettes had different names for the color, but some of the paint codes are actually the same. But they, rate, they named all of their uh, paint colors for Corvettes in 69 after racetracks uh, they started doing that and so it's kind of interesting you know monica orange versus a uh, hugger orange and um you know they may even be the same paint code and some of that stuff but when it came to this build this actually was a resin body that came to me from uh, mickey jerry's um and he had contacted me as a fan of the channel and um through um jerry actually Jerry Chevalier, which actually did the resin body of the other one. So it was kind of funny that, um, you know, he went that route and, uh, you know, we got to talking, but 
he had this body and he really wanted to, you know, to see me build it. And, you know, at the, at the time too, it's one I wanted to build and everything. So, you know, when that opportunity came up, I just could not pass it up. So, um, it, it's been a couple of years since I got it, but I really wanted to build it. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, his versus, uh, the, this other one here, which this is, uh, uh, mini exotics resins, but both of these, like Jerry was doing these 20, 25 years ago. And I had found out about them, but it was a, a long dream of mine to own one of these, but didn't think I would actually get one. And then I was going to modify one to kind of do this kind. But, uh, you know, I ran into the thread where uh, Mickey was making these and I thought, oh, that's really cool. But for him to contact me and and offer it, I was like, okay, I, I really had to jump on that. But so, you know, when it comes to both of them, that's why they're kind of, they're not truly specific to the exact cars I wanted to do because I really love this stripe arrangement on this particular car. And this one, um, the real car was actually custom painted and it was a $500 upcharge for its custom paint and the modified Shelby scoops to fit here. And plus kind of the mustache on the front here. Some of his later cars had that. I kind of love that and the spike down the side, but a good chunk of them had stripes like this where um, not quite as much on the front, just basically right on the hood and down the basic T-stripe. Uh, I love the way those look too. And uh, you know, same with this one. This one, I left it alone, but pretty much box stock or vel kit. This one's on the channel as well, but I actually painted these stripes um, instead of getting them made in white. So um, this one is stone stock as a SS427 one, but that's pretty much the Ravel kit. And since I'm talking about that, I did show off my original build here from the early 90s when the kit first came out. So not my best work here, but um, quite a nice one. And I still love it, of course. But, um, you know, instead of replace it, um, I built another one in its place as the kit was much more easily available. So these came out awesome. I featured this one on the channel and showed it off. Uh, motor's pretty much the same, Phase 3 GT, spark plug wires and all kinds of good stuff here and the underside here. But I didn't space the wheels out, so the wheels are kind of in just a little bit as far as the kit goes. And it's got the original Ravel kit wheels and tires, just added knockoffs. Um, but pretty much left this one, the chassis, pretty much alone and uh, just did a couple of things. But on this one, you can see I changed the wheels and tires. I lowered the front a little bit. I spaced them out so they really you know stick out. And then I added the side pipes from the Ravel race car uh, kits, which are actually 68s, but they have these uh, there. I was gonna leave the chrome piece behind it, but these um, headers, they're, the way they're molded, they fit snugly against it and glue right to it. And on a lot of the race cars, that chrome wasn't there. It was body color um, or black, and um, these were bolted right on. So I did all of that, um, put hood pins on it, and uh, the, the motion photo etch, which uh, comes in um, the other kits, the resin kits from uh, Jerry Chevalier, the Mini Exotics. But I dressed this engine up. Um, used bits and pieces from the 70 Baldwin Motion Corvette AMT kit, which that's where the valve covers and the air cleaner come from, the Fly Eye air cleaner. This air cleaner is a little bit taller, but uh, everything fits. It's kind of a snug fit, but uh, everything fits in there and it comes out real nice. But that air cleaner, you can really see it through that scoop. It's like right up there. Pretty, pretty tight. And uh, no emblems on it. He shaved the Corvette emblems off of it. But, you know, when you look through this one, it's got a little bit different fly eye, a little bit farther down. But that's the air cleaner on this one. I did open up the scoops on the hood. But you can see that one's just a little bit farther down. Pretty much the same air cleaner, but a little bit farther down. Now, Ravel, theirs is molded shut. Which on all of these scoops from Chevrolet, they're molded shut. Everybody did them. But on uh, Joe Rosen's Phase 3 GTs and Phase 3 cars... They were open, so even on this one, I cut it open so you can see right through it. But uh, pretty cool stuff. 
and uh, you know I had a really good time building it. A little bit of a challenge as I was just taking my time and making sure everything fit and doing my time on the bodywork just to get it done and how I wanted it. So really pleased with how this came out. And of course it's a uh, sister here as uh, they're a little different. This one was a real challenge to paint. So um, since I didn't you know, do that one in the, its video outside and I wasn't doing that at the time, you know, I, I have all these outside. You already saw that in that point. So, all right, we'll, uh, we'll continue on and I'm gonna, you know, get back to dreaming about my next Baldwin Motion uh, build, but I think I take a small break from doing uh, some of these, even though I, I love this one and I'm pretty excited about it. I've got uh, other projects that, uh, you know, I gotta work on as well. And you know how it is as a modeler, you're always thinking about your next one, what you wanna do, how you wanna do it. And, uh, you know, I've got one more, or one or two more Corvettes that are Baldwin Motion possibilities. And uh, of course, many other Corvettes to go as well. And not to mention many other projects in the in the pipeline or in the dreams here. But you guys, thank you for your comments and your likes. I really do appreciate it. And your shares and, and everything that goes along with that. You guys, thank you for tuning in and subscribing. And I will see you next time.